Friday morning. Woke up a little late. Can't beat the guy Alex at waking up. Let's see how it's going. Hey. Dude, where have you been, cuz? <laughs> Mark's open up in 20 minutes. Oh man, how we doing? Uh, we're already starting to trade, man. We got some shorts on Bed Bath & Beyond today. I don't know if I told you what happened with this stock, dude. It went crazy. So if you look right here, this stock ran from five, six dollars to thirty dollars. All right. The top investor, the CEO, the CFO, they all sold their stock at thirty bucks, and now it's at eight bucks. So this stock is pretty much dead. There's rumors going around that they might go bankrupt, and today it just bounced for no reason from eight to eight seventy. Um, so we're short a little bit around 860 and we'll either add to the position if it goes higher or exit the position for a win if it goes lower. Other than that, there's a hot stock running PXMD right over here, four to almost six. This is a little bit too crazy for me. So I'm just gonna kind of keep it on the side radar. I'm gonna kind of let it do its thing. And if it presents an opportunity, I'll trade it. But market's gonna open up here in 20 minutes and hopefully we find some more setups. Today's kind of like a slower day, not really much moving. So I'm trying to squeeze water out of a rock pretty much. So for the Bed Bath & Beyond, um, is that public information that they that they did it? Yeah, I think they have up to 48 hours to disclose if they sold. And bro, these guys must be amazing traders because they sold at 30 at the top. I couldn't even <laughs> short it at 30. And now it's at eight. So imagine, imagine you're like an investor and you bought it at like 25 and now it's at 850. You're down 66% cuz. No. 66% you're down. So if you put a million down. The problem is what people do is they see this price, they think it like Bed Bath & Beyond is having like a 60% off coupon sale. <laughs> so they buy it and try to fix their average and it just never bounces. Bro. Right. So maybe who knows, maybe today's the day it's gonna bounce and I'm gonna lose my ass but. We're pretty much waiting now. Hopefully an easier opportunity comes along. And why don't you want to attack that, um, that PXMD? So this PXMD has been an IPO stock, which is like an initial public offering. And for whatever reason, while we're recording this video, IPO stocks have been really hot. So because they've been really hot, I don't want to get anywhere near them. Because there's they too much volume? They trade irrationally. Right. They're, not, right. they're not sticking to the patterns. And because they're not sticking to the patterns, I'm not going to f*** around with it, you know? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Last couple days have been pretty hot, but overall the market this year has been cold as hell, bro. It's it's really hard to make money this year. Like, like I'm still doing pretty good, bro. Like, don't get me wrong, but like I would say 95% of people are losing money this year, and not just money, like big money. So as a new trader like myself, because I'm I'm, about to, I'm actually about to start trading. What's the uh, what's the key to, to be like consistent like you? I mean, like you know, I, I, I'm looking at the charts. I'm learning all the different ways. You know, if, if it comes down to like maybe a couple things, like what's what's the main key point that people are losing money and you you can give them advice on that? Time, bro. Time. It's a lot of people are impatient, bro. They see me making a load of money and they're like. I could do it too. The thing is you can do it too, but the best analogy that I give people is like, bro, think about our boy Dan. He's going to medical school for 10 years, bro. 10 years and then he's gonna make half a million dollars. Are you willing to go to trading school for 10 years to make that? Most people don't want to. Now it's not gonna take 10 years. It might take one year, bro, one year, but people are willing to commit that time they're not willing to put in that work for one year. And because of that, I think a lot of people fail before they give themselves a real chance to succeed. You know, you guys got a couple different chart patterns, but what's like, what's going on with it now? I mean, like, is it, is it kind of like, um, is there high volatility? Is there, I mean, right now I even see it shooting up, like back to, I don't know, I don't know what's going on with this. So, couple things. This one is just a short into a bounce. So as stocks tank, they eventually bounce. So I'm pretty much just betting that this bounce is not gonna be as strong as people think and is gonna come back down. Now right now it's at 860. I would love this to bounce to nine because the higher it bounces, the more chance it has of going down. If it just bounces a little bit, it may come down a little bit. But if it bounces big, it'll come down big. So I have a small position on now in case it just collapses. But in reality, I would love this thing to go a little bit higher to get people excited 
and then I'll bet against that excitement. When you're making your watch list and you're kind of planning yourself and you see the pre-market run, what are like the changes you see and like how do you alter yourself? Like if I'm a new trader and I'm looking at your watch list and I don't know a lot of the things you know, how can I do my research to figure out the stuff you figure out on spot like in between that, you know, hour? I want to show you something that might blow your mind. One second. So this is the video library, and basically if you want to learn anything about trading, like let's say watch list, we have videos on you know how Alex makes his watch list, my watch list, everything, everything that you can imagine, 30 pages of videos of how to build a watch list. So look, how Alex builds a watch list. So this is basically gonna Monday, is Monday, July 11th. This is basically gonna teach you how to build a watch list every single day. So we have all the videos, we have all the content, I promise. People don't watch it, bro. Yeah. I don't understand. People don't watch it. <laughs> I would say only 10% of people watch it, and that makes sense because 90% of traders fail. So to be part of the 10% of traders that actually succeed, you gotta show up. After the accelerator, I feel like I need some advice on where to go. You know, like do I watch the watch list videos next? Do I watch what do I watch next? And what's the most important? So that's like my, that's the difficulty I feel like some people could have. Sure, so going back to that video library, I'm gonna show you what to do. So this video library has the roadmap for you to follow. So first it says the MIC Jumpstart Accelerator, which you just did, and then the Getting Started Curriculum. This is a list of videos to get started, and then after this, these are the next videos to follow. Now you don't have to watch every single one of them, but there's a linear path for you to follow with all this stuff. Wow, I live with this guy and I didn't even know this. This is great. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> all right, so now that we know how to build a watch list, we, we know what the video, you know, what videos to watch next. Next thing is just screen time. Like you have to watch, like you have to watch the market. Because the more you watch the market, the more you'll learn the patterns. So I've been doing this for eight and a half years, so the patterns are like in my head. I pretty much know, I think, a lot of the patterns that happen. The only way you can learn that is if you keep watching. It's like every day that you drive a car, you get a little bit better every single day. It's just like trading. Every day that you watch the market, you get a little bit better. Think about the driver you were when you were 17 years old and the driver you are when you're 27 years old. Yeah. 17 year old Alex could not even drive straight, dude. <laughs> Some would argue 17 year old Alex was a fun driver, man. <laughs> Some would argue. <laughs> <laughs> He's trading, he's a sick guy, this guy. He's just trading and trading and trading. I like to take it slow, maybe one or two stocks a day. I was like 15, if any stock is up, the guy's attacking him. <laughs> and yeah, he was attacking in the airport, on the car, <laughs> getting the rental he's car. A real trader, he's a trader, he's a trader. Yeah, yeah. Like look, he's already shorting this thing. I don't even know what this is. He nailed it. All right, everyone says it, but like literally though, how does he get the top out every time? He's so good. He's been doing it 20 years, bro. So is that is that like is that drawing your line so well that you know it's yeah. gonna hit right there? Is that what it is? You just set your orders and you wait. It's like fishing. He's fishing, and when the fish hits, it's the top. Right. When it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. But you see it too, bro. You've been, you're not even in MIC yeah. like too much, but like you see how how it does it. Yeah. And this is the same things that we teach our guys every day. And now that I'm learning now, I'm like, okay, like I should probably wait for it to like go down and then like maybe hit it for, for scale it for a little bit. But it's like, he's not even scaling, he's just getting the whole thing. He's really good. Like that's 50 cents a share right there. So if he even used like 2000 shares times 50 cents, probably a thousand bucks on that trade in five minutes. Well, pretty good if you ask me, dude. Yeah. So that whole, um, all those videos in order and, and that whole timeline, is that available to all like members, the, yeah. like yearly and lifetime? Yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't really upcharge well, we don't really upsell. Like when you join, you get pretty much everything. Right. So that's the way it should be. The part is probably the most annoying part of the day, which is just waiting for the market to open. Right. There's millions and millions of traders just sitting here like this, dude, just waiting, <laughs> waiting. And when the market opens, everyone just like attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Now three minutes to market open. I was getting his last minute stretch in. I sit down all day, bro. My back starts to hurt. This pillow's getting shit. But I don't want to get rid of this chair, bro. It's a good luck chair. <laughs> I think you need time to upgrade the chair, guys. Bro, my brother has like a three thousand dollar Herman Miller chair. It's nice, oh, it's comfortable, but bro, I'm afraid if I get rid of this chair, I'm not gonna make money anymore. Buy the chair, try it out for a day. 
If not, you can have it. Yeah, exactly. If not, exactly I, I, I'll chair. take it. My old chair, the first day that I used it, I didn't make money, and I gave it to my roommate then. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps going up and up and up and up and up. These stocks, bro, the trend right now for these IPOs is hot. So, bro, let it just go. Yeah. Let it just go. I mean, hindsight, I should have bought some, but like, I'm just really not good at that. Right. I know what I'm good at and I'd rather stick to it. So, you gotta just be like the master at one than the, rather than the stick, jack of all trades. Stick to your niche, bro. Right. Like, Bao. Bao only likes Asian girls. Doesn't matter if she's Middle Eastern, Spanish, right. white, he will not get anywhere near them because he knows. He, Asian girls are his niche. <laughs> so find your niche in trading is the key. It's originally pre, this pre-market. What were you thinking on uh, PXMD? PXMD, I was thinking this is a new IPO, recent IPO, it's kind of beaten down and they've been running these IPOs, so I've just been staying away. Now is that something because of IPO and because maybe this volatility, it's like a part to borrow stock or is that just the... Uh... It's just the hot sector. Like sometimes like shipping companies are hot. Sometimes mean stocks are hot. Dries. Sometimes <laughs> uh, like COVID stocks are hot. So whatever the theme is right now, IPOs are hot. It doesn't matter why. All that matters is identifying what the hot sector is. So That's you have to identify, you don't have to overthink it, bro. You right. don't have to like be a genius. Okay, the moon is in this side of the sun and that's why this is happening. It's just happening, so just deal with it. Right. And now the market's open up in five seconds. So let's see what this is. So because of bouncing, I'm trying to short some more. So you ideally want it to go under this candle of 38. Oh, that's a long candle. I didn't even notice it. Seems like a perfect stock. It's around $8. What's the volatility like? It's kind of moving a little bit slower today, which is interesting, but... Let's see. 45. So we want this line to break here, dude. And I'm adding because it looks like it's gonna break. And almost there. Almost there. 38 is the low. It tested 38 one time and it held. But ideally we want it to test 38 again and fail, which it did right now. Oh wow. That's what you want to see for two candles right there. It's funny because Bed Bath is like a real company with like a real like real stores. <laughs> so it's, it's like real stores, but the stores aren't profitable. Right. If the stores are not profitable, then eh, right. you know. Again, this is a dead cat bounce. This is a stock that has just been tanking. Right. Every bounce should continue to tank. At the end of the day, the, the day just started. If you hit this correctly and you, you have a little bit of volume, I mean, you could literally do one trade on this and, and make your money for the day. Make your money for the day of the week. See how I'm, I'm exiting here? Yeah. All these giant red candles that are happening. Yeah, I mean, this is giant free. I mean, this is unbelievable. It's already been four minutes. And I'm trying to exit some more. It makes it look easy, man. <laughs> when these stocks go down is when people panic. When people panic, it gives me enough opportunity to exit my position. So I'm just trying to exit my position here, bro. I'm trying to exit my position. I made almost, what is this? 860 minus 8.4. I made almost 36 cents a share. Oh, 821. I'm trying to exit some more. Come on, 820. Yeah, 820. really, all you're looking for is 15 and 20 cents a share. It depends. So I sized up a little bit bigger on this stock because I know, bro, I know that this is garbage. I yeah. know. And the bounce failed. So the price action told me that the bounce was failing. So that's all I needed. Man, that's wild. As soon as you shorted, it just went three straight candles down. I'm just trying to exit, bro. I'm trying to exit here. I'm not trying to be greedy. I'm trying to exit. Right. Get some money. So I exited about 70% of my position on this dip. Locked in $15,000 on that dip, dude. And we still have 5,000 waiting. So if this all goes well, it should be about 20,000 in five minutes, dude. 
is a superpower, dude. If you learn how to do this, this is a superpower. So look how it's bouncing. I'm gonna start to add a little bit more on this right, bounce. I'm right. Trying to short someone the bounce. And that's our little uh, resistance line right there. Yeah, this view. I, I think it'll push a little bit, dude. So I don't want to get too aggressive. But what I did right is adding when it failed this line. What I did right is exiting on this dip because now look, it's bouncing. Right. But now, now that it's touching that VWAP line, like, isn't it kind of a little scarier or no? It depends what it does. Is it gonna reject or is it gonna push? Right. Right now, it looks like it's rejected. We added at 834 and 838, and now it's 826. So it's coming right back down. So I'm getting more out of 25, see? Same spot, 25, getting out. Trying to get out as much as I can. Now, if it went over that VWAP line and it started making a strong push towards that 860 again, that's kind of a sign, right? I would, yes, yes. But you never know, so what might happen is this dip might hold and it might push. So that's why I took some off, you see? Right. Now I have like a third of my position, dude. I'm either gonna exit if it goes lower or add if it goes higher. And I'm like scouring around, looking around the market for like other opportunities. What do you think about the, uh, this one? I think it's a little bit of a trap, bro. I yeah. think they're gonna dip it down to shoot it up. Right. So I don't know yet. I think this is actually like a perfect one because this is like, you see it hitting the lines, the resistance and the, and the, and the floor and um. Look at this, bro. The resistance is here at 860. So we just shorted the resistance and we add it to the winner. Now look, it's gonna break the lows. Well, I hope. So 817 is the low, it's at 820. So hopefully this breaks the lows and then we get to exit our position. I hope. When you actually like pull back and look at that whole uh, chart, the reason why you're so comfortable is because you see that, you see the top and the bottom kind of in the, the, those last couple of days or a couple of weeks, right? So, I mean, it's just like, it's kind of in the middle right now. So isn't it destined to like kind of come back down and fall? So here's the thing. When stocks are weak, they continue to act weak. When stocks are strong, they continue to act strong. This stock has no more reason to go up is what I think other than just random rebounds. So every time it rebounds, it should fail because too many people are stuck at higher prices. Imagine you bought the stock at 15, 20, 25. If this shit bounces to 10, 11, 12, you're gonna sell for a small loss because you're already down a lot, you know? So I'm just piggybacking on these sellers. Now some might argue that, let's say like the GameStop and the, and the uh, AMC. AMC, right? So those were really strong stocks that were going up, 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 and then they just crash. So I mean, is there, I mean, how do you how do you identify stuff like that? It's just the chart patterns, bro. Like you could look from this chart pattern here. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to buy a stock like this, dude. I want to buy a stock that's like trending up, you know. Right. So this is a very weak stock, dude. very weak stock. Right. As so a new trader, I'm trying to look at the fact that like it's not over the VWAP line. It's it's kind of playing around, playing games for the last couple minutes. So I mean, this this is actually a good opportunity here, right? This is a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. I feel like I've seen you do this, like even if it goes past the view offline and maybe even gets close to that 860 again, I feel like it's still kind of like, you know, volume's low, still kind of broken. Yeah, as long as the bounces don't hold, it should go down. Right. So right now, based on what I'm seeing, it looks like it's gonna break down. So I locked in some profits, I reshorted the bounce, and now I think the bounce is gonna fail. So I'm trying to slowly get back in. So now when you add in more, what is it, like one third of the original size you put in, or is it like? Even less, bro, like one tenth at a time. Like oh, okay. Slowly, right. slowly. What is, it, what is the volume on something like this? About five million shares of trade so far, which is a right. good volume. Right. The thing is, bro, a lot of people, they forget about these stocks. They stop trading them. They stop trading them because this new hot stock is moving. So what I do is when people forget about it, when people don't care about it, when people don't want it, that's what it seems like to me are the easiest fits. Right. You know? So now it's trying to bounce. So why'd you pick that 842 line? I'm trying to figure that out. This is the top of this oh, can. Oh, I see, I see, okay. This is the top of the can. Right. I'm using that. So 
as far as the rest of the stuff on your watch list, I know you're watching kind of these two stocks here, but is there anything else uh, going on? It is a slow day. Yeah. It is a slow day. It's making 20k on a slow day. Come on, man. It is a slow day, yeah. Starting to bounce again. It hit that 42 line and right. it looked like it rejected. So, trying to scale in some more. Now, this stock PXMD, the one that was hot, it just cratered. So, if this thing bounces, it should be a bit short. It's time, right? Yeah. Because yeah. now we know, now we know what the trend is. Right. If you tried to run it up, it didn't really work. This is what scares me in trading like this whole you know it looked so awesome like for those three minutes those three candles shot down you made your money it was great now it's just like i don't know now it's just playing a game you, bro these stocks can never go straight down they can never go straight down they have to do a little bit of this they have to go in the flow right yeah. it's a little past 10 o'clock and you made one trade so far which is okay what else is going on that's pretty much it, bro. We're waiting for this stock to bounce so that we can get a short on it. We're waiting for this stock to tank so we can make some money on it. And I'm pretty much back into a full-size position here because the stock failed. So I feel comfortable and confident to hold a full-size position. And what I would love to see is I would love to see this break 8.20, go to $8 and call it a day. Now that might be asking for a little bit too much, but I think that it has the potential to crash that low. So let's see. And let's say it took a while. Let's say even after 10:30, you're still waiting for that. Is that like something you want to just pull out of, or you want to you want to keep that? So it depends on the position. It depends on the price action. Most of the time, I'm out of my trades by 10:30. But because this is a little bit of a special scenario, I like to give myself a little bit more time. So it pretty much depends. If it's still acting weak, if it's still pretty much broken, then I'll be patient. If it's starting to slowly make its way back up, then I'm like, you know what? I don't want it. So for knowledge and attacking purposes, like what, what do we do with PXMD? What, what's what's the uh, move here? Maybe around 5:30, more short. But I'm not I'm, I'm not sure yet. I want to kind of see what it does first. But I'm thinking 5:30 would be a bit short. So I just tanked at 5:25. We said 5:30, tanked yeah. at 5:25. Yeah. It's like as this bed bath is going on, you can make more and more lines. Like there's another line probably at that 848 mark, right? Or. Uh -huh. 46. Yeah, 46, yeah. Yeah, but these are just the main ones right now because right in the middle. Right. right. It made its top, it made its bottom, now it's in the middle. Right. All right, guys, 10.30 a.m. here. Uh, still in this bed, bath, and beyond position. Probably going to give it another hour or two to kind of see what it does. You know, still up, you know, a couple thousand dollars on the day. Um, you know, it started to act a little bit choppy towards the midday, which is fine. The overall market is rebounding, so this is rebounding, but I still think it has a really good possibility of going back down to eight. So I'm gonna let my position work and we'll check back with you guys in a few hours. All right, Alex, what happened after I left? All right, now it's 4.45 p.m. Market's been closed for 45 minutes. We just finished our day a little bit earlier. So let's recap what happened here when you left. So let's start with this PXMD stock. So remember this stock, it hit that line there, and then it came back down. Right. We're like, it's kind of trappy. We don't know what it's going to do. This is what I ended up doing. It ended up towards the middle of the day, just slowly but surely just going higher and higher and higher and higher. And they just ended up trapping this stock. So this stock just went right back up here. Wow. So it just trapped all the way, which is crazy. I didn't touch that stock at all today. Just ignored it. You could call on that one. Yeah, that was good, bro. Day one IPO. Leave it alone. Bed Bath & Beyond, when you left, it was kind of around that line there at top. Remember that? Right. It was around that line. So this is what ended up happening on Bed Bath & Beyond. It hit that line and then slowly started going down and down and down and down. Oh and gosh. I ended up getting out here, which is around that 820, exactly 820 what you level. Exactly what you and that's pretty much it, bro. I had a couple scalps, just traded Tesla, just on the bounce a little bit, nothing crazy there. But we ended the day about $30,000 on the day. Plus 30. So we were at around 20 when you last left. Right. So we added about another $10,000, which is crazy. But Not bad, man. That's a pretty good way to end the weekend. And So question, PXMD, 
Yeah. Is this something you would attack uh, on Monday? Yeah, on Monday, I would look to attack because what ended up happening is it went all the way back, went back down, went right. all the way back. So this six dollar line here, six dollar line, should be a good place to short it. So let's see what happens next week. Perfect. But that's about it, bro. Yeah. That's pretty much it for Sunday. Good. If I just walked away after four minutes, we would make twenty thousand. I stayed a little bit longer, added another ten thousand, but that's pretty much it. Right, I mean, not every member should do that, but you're a beast. Yeah, it depends on the scenario. It yeah. depends on the scenario. That's not it, bro. Happy Labor Day, brother. Let's go. Let's go.